We're talking about trustworthy. So come on and let's talk about it. Hello everyone, Simply CC here and welcome back to my channel. And let's jump into trustworthy as we do every week with the words. I'm going to read the definition and we're going to talk about it. Uh, the definition I have here is able to be relied on to do or provide what is needed or right, deserving of trust. And so when we talk about trustworthiness and you know I'm always going to relate it to our you know our, our God in heaven and our Savior Jesus Christ and what he has taught me about this word and why we why I feel like this was one of the words he was wanting me to work upon when I think about being trustworthy I understand that I'm not a liar and a lot of you may understand that I'm not a liar I mean you can trust me if I say what I'm going to do I'm going to do it um, I'm not going to lie on someone. I'm not going to say something that isn't true. Um, and I can agree with all those things. And I can say that I am all of those things really for the most part of my life. I haven't always been, but we all can relate to that as well. But when God was dealing with me about trustworthiness, um, it, he, he zoned in on the part of me lying and what he was talking about when it comes to my lies was not that I was just coming to want some coming to someone and telling them something that was absolutely not true. But more than that, he was, especially in my marriage, he was dealing with me not expressing completely and honestly my feelings and my emotions to my husband and to anyone. I am a licensed cosmetologist and sometimes it is very hard for me to say things that are the truth. If I feel like this can create a conflict or this can hurt someone's feelings. And when we read the definition of trustworthy, it's not talking at all about not lying. It's talking about being able to be relied upon to do what is needed or what is right. Um, deserving of trust. When we think about trustworthiness, we have to understand that it's not just your word, not just telling someone you're going to do something and showing up. That is a part of it. And it's a big part. But this part that God was dealing with me um, with was being able to be relied upon. When he talks about it in my marriage, if my husband can't rely on me to tell him the truth about what I'm feeling, what I'm thinking about emotion or something, anything that is going on with me. I'm not being trustworthy. My husband can't take my word for it. He can't read my emotions properly if I'm not giving him what I truly feel. That was one of the things God dealt with me upon. Another thing uh, God dealt with me upon was, you know, able to be relied upon, of course, like we said, keeping your word, being there. Um, I've learned that in friendships. I have lost friendships because I wasn't able to keep my word and it's not because I didn't want to. It's not because um, I decided, you know, I said I was going to do something I didn't. But what God showed me is that I didn't put forth that effort to make sure I was going to make this, you know, event or I was going to show up when I was asked to. And for me, you know, it hit home and I had to lose a relationship to grow in this area, knowing that. We have to understand that when we have relationships with anyone, whether it be marriage, whether it be friendship, whether it be father-in-law, mother-in-law, sisters, brothers, uh, cousins, aunties and nieces, uncles and nieces, uncles and nephews, aunties and nephews, whatever the relationship is. We have to be able to be relied upon to do those things. Having a relationship requires work. If you didn't know that, I, it feels like it would be obviously self-explanatory, but we all have dealt with people and we have been that person that hasn't been able to be relied upon because of selfish reasons, because we believe we couldn't, because something came up. But what I learned um, when I can't show up for things or if, if someone can't rely on me to do something, how that affects them, even if it wasn't my fault, uh, you know, even if. I got hung up at work, even if I got stuck in traffic, we have to understand that that still hurts the person anyway, because there's always a way it seems around not being there. 
but I thought I had a legitimate reason for, you know, some of the occasions and things that I missed. But even with all of that being factual, it still cost me a relationship. So be relied upon. You know, we can usually tell well before if um, we aren't going to be able to do something, if we're not capable of doing something, or if something comes up. Being trustworthy, again, being honest with that person, being able to give them fully what they need um, from you as a friend or any relationship you have. This is not just friendships, but it's all relationships. People need you to show up and showing up for someone. If you can all remember in your life when someone showed up for you at a time that you didn't know you needed it. And then when you saw them it made your day it it helped you get through whatever it was you were dealing with or whatever event you were maybe participating in or attending whatever the case may be and i'm sorry guys i'm outside because it's a beautiful day and i have my neighbors behind me playing so if you hear those kids that's what it is um so you have to understand what god taught me is that that works two ways sometimes someone needs me and i'm saying to you sometimes someone needs you to be that person that shows up when they most need it or when they don't think they need it. Another thing uh, when we talk about trustworthy, it's not just uh, being relied upon, but it's able to provide what is needed. As a child of God and all of you, whether you're starting this journey with, uh, with God, if you've been on this journey and you're just growing and you want to be better because on this journey with God, walking with Jesus does not end. It is an ongoing cycle and he's always teaching us something, always elevating us to the next level. But as children of God, you know, in the Bible, it tells us that we are the light of the world and the salt of the earth, meaning we are here to provide something that is needed as children of God. We have to share our relationship, not just to talk to people, not just me even talking to you. I believe, yes, if this helps one person, this is me doing something that is needed, but also not just doing or saying those things, but living that life. People watch you a lot more than you think. Don't think that they only pay attention to you when you're in their face. Don't think that they only see you when you guys are at a certain event. People watch you all the time. Um, some people may not care, but there's always someone watching. And what God has shown me is that it, you ever heard the saying that I can show you better than I can tell you. It's so true. And God has shown me that that is true for my life, for my walk with him on this journey as a Christian and as a child of God, that I have to show who God is, not by just sharing a video with you guys, not by just spreading something positive, not by just posting a scripture on my social media that may be encouraging and all those things help, but also by the way I live. What do I look like when I face trials and tribulations? What do, how does Sierra respond when someone steps out of line with her or when someone's mean or rude or hurtful? How does she live her life? How does she deal with the unknown? How does she deal with when something comes up out of the blue? Because people draw strength from that too. You know, one of the uh, scriptures in the Bible say we overcame him, speaking of the devil as him, by the blood of the lamb, who is Jesus Christ, and the word of our testimony. And when I really grasped that scripture, I understood that a lot of people's testimonies that I've heard over time, has come back to me when I've dealt with something that was similar to what they've been through. So when I say provide what is needed, we have to know that sharing God is everything. Yes, we have to put the scriptures out there, talk to people who need it, be encouraging all day long, do that, but make sure you live your life in a way that shows people who you reverence, who you worship, who you praise, and who you believe is in control of your life. People are watching you. And then when it says providing what is needed, and it says are right. Part of being trustworthy means doing the right thing all the time. When I worked at Target many, many years ago, and I, I used to do orientations when, you know, new hires came in. And one of the things that we used to have on our wall in our orientation room, it was talking about, and I hope I do not forget that word. Uh, now, of course, I can't think of it. I'm trying to, oh, yes, there it is. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 
<laughs> um, but it was saying um, it had integrity. And underneath it, it said something along the lines, doing what's right even when no one's watching. And um, when I read that, it stuck with me all of these years because sometimes people are watching, sometimes they aren't. Or no, people are always watching. That's not what I meant to say. People are always watching. Sometimes we believe that they aren't. And when I read that about having integrity about doing what's right even when no one's watching means that no matter if you got a big stage of people if you have one person in front of you if you have no one in front of you do the right thing god has given us wisdom enough to know we see it in our little children as they grow up they learn right from wrong very very quickly and as adults we are even better a lot of times when people don't do the right thing, I believe, and I could be wrong, is because we don't want to. We just choose to do what we feel is right for the moment. But I believe that there is always a proper way to handle a situation, even if that means, you know what, laying down, sometimes surrendering and letting go. You don't have to fight with everyone. It's not always about winning. You know, I, I believe there's something in Proverbs that talks about the wife that won their husband over without a word. And God knows I try to practice that as much as possible. And I have made extremely great gains in my marriage. You don't have to fight your husband on every little thing. You're not going to always agree. Near one of us, near one of you are always going to be right. But we are learning in our relationship, me and my husband, we practice if we're having an argument, is this leading to a solution or is this leading to a blow up? You have to make that decision and you got to use that discernment. And it takes practice. It takes time because if you're used to, you feel those emotions and you letting them out, you let them out. And just like I said before, I don't remember exactly what week it was since we skipped the word last week. We um, didn't do the words. But always remember the wrath of man does not bring about the righteousness of God. So for me, when I feel myself getting angry and I'm ready to say something, if I know I'm acting in anger, I always be still. You know, we talked about that too. Be still. You don't have to fight everything. Things are going to resolve. If you're right, you're right. You know, like that is just the matter. That's the fact. You know, when you go to a court, you go to a judge, they don't do all of that. Like, you know, arguing back and forth. The judge is like, I'm going to listen to it. And they're going to say what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. And that's just it. And that's the reality. If you're right, you know you're right. It's going to come out. We, have, Me and my husband have arguments where he was absolutely right and I was absolutely wrong and vice versa. It's going to happen, but we don't have to fight tooth and nail to get there. We have to be mindful of what we're doing. As they say, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He is, And he wants to work on them emotions. And I'm learning that if we allow him in through cracks in us, and I believe cracks come in any way. Someone says something hurtful. I believe that's a crack. That means he can get in and start playing on that emotion that you're now feeling and get you to act out of the way that God wants you to. So I believe there's a reason why God said that. The wrath of man does not bring about the righteousness of God. So we want to make sure that we're doing what's right all the time. That's being trustworthy. Being able to, people don't have to be on you to know that, hey, CC is always doing the right thing. She's doing the best she can. She's going to do the right thing above all. She's going to seek that out. Be those things. That is what a part of trustworthiness is. And the last part of trustworthiness is deserving of trust. And that is something individually that we all have to evaluate ourselves about and be genuine with yourself. You know, one thing that God has taught me is, Sierra, do not lie to yourself. Don't lie to yourselves. We have a great instinct. And if we really have a confusion about anything, we can take that to God. That's what I always tell you. Whenever I struggle with confusion, if I think something but I'm unsure, I always go to God about it. But I have to be um, honest with myself. And you have to ask yourself the question, am I deserving of trust? Am I, can I evaluate myself? Because we can see ourselves when other people can't. We know what we're thinking when we're saying something opposite of that. We know what we're thinking when we're saying what we're thinking. We know how we are going to handle a situation, whether we tell them we're going to do it that way or we don't. And so at the end of the day, being trustworthy is being deserving of trust. And you have to ask yourself that question. Are you deserving of trust? 
So I pray that today this blesses you guys, that it helps you out on this journey called life because we all need some help. We all need some guidance at times, but be trustworthy. Practice that, think about it, meditate on that, pray to God about it. As always, I will always say that and see how you can implement trustworthiness in your life. When I read that short description, I can even see things that I can definitely continue to work on. We don't have to be bad. And if you feel like you're horrible, you ain't that bad. Everything is work in progress. We all are. Nobody is perfect. And we're, we're not going to get this journey or this thing called life done perfectly without the help of God. And we need him. We need Jesus. That's why he's giving them to us. And let's grab hold of that. So I love you guys. I hope that you are motivated today. I hope that this helps somebody. Please be blessed. Please stay focused, stay motivated, and again, get in your word. And I hope you guys have started. If you didn't start in the book of Proverbs, find a book of the Bible that's interesting and start digging into it. If you if you haven't been reading anything and you have a favorite book of the Bible, go back to it and read it again. It's always something new you can pick up. The Bible is always it's a living word and it's always feeding us something new. It never gets old. So enjoy your day. I love you guys. Um, and I will talk to you all next week. Bye.